welcome back to WMMA Scene Now, and welcome to episode 50 of the WMMA Scene Report. That's right, we made it to 50, so took a few weeks off, let everyone enjoy the holidays, enjoyed the holidays myself. Now we're getting back into it, so let's start where we always start. We're going to go over, uh, really, all the events surrounding uh, the New Year holiday, like right before and after Christmas. So first up, we're going to Bellator number 2. 35, this was December 20th, one ladies fight, Alejandra Lara defeated Veda Ortega via unanimous decision, Lara climbed to 9 and 3, Ortega fell to 5 and 4, now this was a pretty much a beat down by Alejandra Lara, she showed a lot of improvement in this fight, uh, I particularly liked in the clinch, where her, her corner told her, you know, don't get involved in a punching war in a clinch. Just elbow her. Don't know what their logic was behind it, but there were some really nice elbows there from Alejandra Lara. Moving along to the very next day, December 21st, Bellator 236 had two ladies' fights. First up at flyweight, Juliana Velazquez defeated Bruna Ellen via unanimous decision. Velazquez climbed to 10-0. and 0. Ellen fell to 5-3. and three. This was un pretty much another beatdown. Uh, I mean, Ellen just really had nothing for Velazquez. Velazquez, you know, chose to just follow and stalk Ellen the whole fight. Picked her shots. Landed hard shots when she, when she did land them. And, I mean, just Ellen had nothing for her other than to just keep moving. I mean, Ellen was clearly the faster fighter, but... Velasquez still landed whenever she wanted to and landed the much harder shots. And then in the main event of the evening, flyweight championship, Alimale McFarland defeated Kate Jackson to retain her flyweight title via unanimous decision. McFarland climbed to 11 and 0, Jackson fell to 11 and 4, and this was mostly a one-sided fight as well. Uh Jackson, very tough opponent, a lot tougher than I gave her credit for. Um, McFarland just never seemed to get on, you know, the gas pedal at all in this fight until late in the fourth and late in the fifth round. Um, never really went for a finish, but pretty much controlled the fight wherever it went. I was really surprised by uh, when McFarland was beating Jackson in the stand-up. I never really gave McFarland much credit in her stand-up. But Jackson just seemed hesitant to throw as well. Most likely due to being afraid of the takedown. So on the 28th, Legend FC had their 14th event. Chinese promotion was in Macaw. Again, they had two ladies fights. First up at flyweight, uh, Xiao Kan Feng, or Feng defeated Qi Yang via KO TKO. Fung climbed to 1 and 0. Yan fell to 0 and 1. And then higher up on the card. Do, 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 where did I see it? Uh, Ji Miao defeated Ji Lu via submission due to armbar at a minute and 51 seconds of the first round. Miao climbed to 9 and 3. Lu fell to 1 and 1. I haven't gotten around to watching these fights yet, but I believe the entire event is available on Legend FC's Facebook page. So you can go ahead and check them out. Uh, let's see. December 28th was Bellator 237, a.k.a. Bellator Japan. Uh, several ladies' fights on here. First up on the main card was a flyweight bout between Kana Watanabe and Alara Joanne. Watanabe defeated Joanne via TKO due to ground and pound, 4 minutes, 39 seconds of the third round. Watanabe climbed to 9-0. and oh. Joanne fell to 9-5. and five. Now, this fight was under Bellator rules. Bellator, uh, like, what do you want to say? Uh, universal rules? Unified rules and judging. Um, Joanne, Joanna, how you want to say her name? She's Brazilian. Uh, I thought she was getting the better of Watanabe on the feet. And then Watanabe took it to where she needed to use her judo skills to take the fight to the ground. Where she had a leg up on Joanna. 
probably the biggest win of Watanabe's career right there. And being that she's mostly going back and forth between Deep Jewels and Ryzen, which doesn't have a women's flyweight division, we could ex probably expect to see her in Bellator again in the future. Now, up on the post limb cards, which was Bellator powered by Ryzen, was basically Ryzen fights in the under Ryzen rules in the Bellator cage. First up, at Super Atomweight, 108 pounds, Ai Shimizu defeated Andy Nguyen via split decision. Shimizu climbed to 6 and 1, Nguyen fell to 6 and 9. And then Kana Asakura defeated Jamie Henshaw via submission due to Kimura at 3 minutes, 33 seconds of the third round. Asakura climbed to 16 and 4. Henshaw fell to 4 and 4. I believe these fights are available now. They weren't available to watch in the U.S. live, but I believe there's places where you can find the fights to watch now. So I haven't gotten to watch them yet, but I believe the Asakura versus Henshaw fight's a pretty good one from what I've heard. Then finally, on New Year's Eve, Ryzen number 20 put on probably the event of the year. And it featured one of the my female fights of the year. Uh, first up at Super Atom Weight, 108 pounds, uh, Miyu Yamamoto defeated Suanan Boonsorn via unanimous decision. Yamamoto climbed to six and four. Boonsorn fell to four and three. And you know what? I picked Boonsorn to win this, and man, I was wrong. Yamamoto came out there with just superior wrestling game. Uh, took Boonsorn down every round and was able to control her and landed ground and pound. Even went for submissions of her own. Boonsorn just seemed a uh, little lost. I I don't think she was used to being put on her back as much and seemed unable to deal with the heavy uh, pressure and top game of Yamamoto. A little higher on the card. At a 112-pound catch weight, Reina Kubota defeated Lindsey Van Zant via TKO. Uh, the corner threw in the towel. That was at 40, 4 minutes, 42 seconds of the third round. Kubota climbed to 10 and 3. Van Zant fell to 7 and 3. Uh, much improved game from Reina this time around. You know, Van Zant, I gave her the f most of the first round. Of course, it's open scoring in Ryzen, um, but... Reyna came on hard in the second and third round. Uh, Van Zant wasn't able to get her takedowns anymore. Uh, Kubota was able to stuff, stifle them and was winning in the stand-up. Uh, you know, Van Zant probably just not... I don't think she was really used to fighting in the ring. I don't think she's ever fought in the ring before. And between that and Reyna being a naturally bigger fighter... Just didn't work out for her the longer the fight went on. So good job by Reyna there to avenge one of her only losses. And then finally, not the main event, but like two fights under the main event. Super Atomweight Championship. Sahi Ham defeated Ayaka Hamasaki via split decision. Ham climbed to 23-8. and eight. Hamasaki fell to 19-3. and three. Ham finally avenging herself from the two prior losses to Hamasaki in 2010 and 2011. I did a full review video on that one, so please go check that out after you're done watching this. All right, so that was the uh, last couple weeks of review. So let's move on to the news. So first up, we have a fight announcement that was ended up being canceled. So I wrote this down in here. And then it ended up being canceled. So Combate Americas is going to San Juan, Puerto Rico on January 25th. And Amanda, the real deal Serrano, was set to take on fellow, fellow boxer Diana Santana. However, I, that fight has been canceled. I don't know what the full deal is. But um, Serrano announced via Twitter that the fight was off. So that was supposed to be at 130-pound catch weight. 
Uh, UFC 246 in on the 18th. That's uh, next weekend. Added a flyweight bout. Sabino Mazo 7-1 versus J.J. Aldridge, who is currently 8-3. Should be a very good fight between two technical striker, strikers. Uh, Mazo more of a kickboxer. Aldridge more traditional boxing type striker. Uh, UFC Fight Night 169. That goes down February 29th in Norfolk, Virginia. Has a pair of featherweight fights. Announced. First up, Megan Anderson, 9-4, and four, taking on Norma Dumont, who was undefeated at 4-0. and oh. And then Felicia Spencer, 7-1, and one, taking on Zara Farando Santos, who is 6-3. and three. So Anderson, coming off a win over Dos Santos, gets an undefeated bantamweight fighter who's moving up in weight. But then Spencer, coming off the first loss of her career, gets matched up against Dos Santos, who's coming off a loss to Anderson. So it's a weird situation up there at UFC Featherweight, which is barely a division. Anyway, so next up, Angela Hill has replaced Brianna Van Buren against Hannah Cyphers at UFC Raleigh on January 25th. Angela Hill always coming in, always offering to replace uh, anybody who's injured. Gotta love Angie Angie Hill there. Um, then a fight announcement for UFC Fight Night in Auckland that goes down February 22nd. Uh, Rachel Ostovich, 4-5, and five, taking on Shayna Dobson, 3-3. Three and three. You gotta think this is a loser-leaves-town match for both of them. I mean, Ostovich has a losing record right now. Dobson has an, a dead-even record. I don't think she has a win in the UFC yet. So, got to think this is a loser leaves town match or a loser goes back to Invicta fight for these two. And then Brave CF34, January 14th, a flyweight bout between Monica Krusinich and Jennifer Trioro. I haven't been able to find anything about either of these two. I believe it might be a debut for both of them. So, and then, oh, next up, a signing for Bellator. Uh, bantamweight Diana Avsarogova, who is 2-0 from Russia, ha- announced uh, via IG that she has signed with Bellator MMA. Most likely, she's going to compete at flyweight. She's going to be too small for featherweight and looks to be, uh, you know, at the right size to be able to make flyweight. So good luck to her. Uh, another pretty girl signing for Bellator. I haven't watched any of her previous fights. I heard she... Uh, Mostly a lay and pray type fighter. Hope not though. Uh, next up, Julia Avila, seven and one versus Carol Hosa, twelve and three, has been rebooked for an as yet unnamed April eleventh UFC event. So that was a fight that was originally scheduled to go down at UFC Fight Night in Pusan, South Korea, it got canceled, and now has been rebooked for April eleventh. Then a fight night, or excuse me, an announce, fight announcement for UFC Brasilia on March 14th at Bantamweight. Veronica Museda, 6-3-1, is moving back up to Bantamweight, and she is taking on Bea Malecki, who is 1-0 as a pro. Um, personally, I think this is a really winnable fight at Bantamweight for Macedo. Uh, Bea Malecki is a lot taller than her, definitely going to be a bigger fighter than her, um, but it's, I think it's a very winnable fight for Malachi, or Macedo. Then continuing with UFC fight announcements, we have one for UFC Columbus on 28th March at Strawweight. Tisha Torres coming in at 10-5, and five, and she's taking on Mizuki Inoue at coming in 14-5. and five. This is going to be a good fight. I'm really looking forward to this. You know, Torres, she's a nonstop action fighter. Not a finisher, obviously, but, you know, she never really stops moving. And then Mizuki is one of those fighters that a lot of people thought should have been in the UFC a long time ago. Finally got to make her debut in a flyweight fight. Now she's moving back down to straw weight. Hopefully she's got her weight and her diet under control, though, because she was having trouble making straw weight her last couple fights in Invicta. And then, oh, let's see. Some news out of Bellator. Bellator flyweight Alejandra Lara recently signed a new six-fight contract with the promotion. So she's staying put in Bellator. And then she also announced 
that she'll be competing on the reality contest show Exatlon USA. So that's a show that uh, Yoel Romero, Jorge Masvidal, Valerie Lareda have all competed on there. And they've all gotten a bit of a popularity boost from that. So it's a Spanish language show. Um, I'm not sure where it airs though if you're interested in watching it. Uh, next up, after being halted after the start of their fight at Aries FC1 due to excessive moisture on the canvas, the bantamweight bout between Rizlan Zoek and Jamila Sandora has been rescheduled for Aries FC2. I believe that's later this month or early next month. I'm not sure the exact date. So the event took place outdoors in like an outdoor arena. Uh, it was a high humidity there. And right around the start, of, right after the start of their match, they realized, you know what, this canvas or vinyl, whatever was on the mat, was uh, too slippery. They couldn't continue with the fights, and that actually canceled that fight and then two others. So now it's been rescheduled for their next event. Um, let's see, oh, Japanese all-female promotion Deep Jewels has announced their first event of the year. It's going down February 24th at something Pier Hall. I forget the name of it. It's in Tokyo. And this event will feature the first round of a microweight minus 44 kilogram tournament. So you're talking about 97 pounds here. It's going to be really tiny chicks. Um, I did an announcement video for this, and I listed a couple possible uh, entrants in the tournament, if you want to go check that out. Next up, Bellator 238, January 28th, Inglewood, California, added... Oh, actually, this fight got canceled, too. Uh, Valerie Lareda, 2-0 versus Tara Graf at 1-1, and and that's at flyweight. This fight got canceled, or excuse me, postponed literally like 24 hours after the announcement came out. Uh, apparently Loretta's injured. However, earlier today, a uh, Ava Knight, boxer who has one fight under Bellator in MMA, excuse me, uh, she announced that she'll be fighting on that card. So I don't know who she'll be facing. I don't think it'll be against Graf because they said that that fight is being postponed. So she's in against an as yet to be named opponent. So yeah, I wrote that I wrote this down before um as soon as it was announced. <laughs> Just give me one sec. Feeling a little parched there. Ah. Okay, a fight announcement for one Warriors Code going down February. 7th in Jakarta, Indonesia at Strawweight B Nguyen 15 and or excuse me 5 and 5 taking on Itsuki Hirata 5 and 0 oh, should be a good one there. And then another fight announcement for a UFC Auckland in February. Um, I forget the exact date on that one. Uh, a Strawweight battle between Loma Lukbunmi and Hannah Goldie. Uh, Look, Boomi is 4-1. Goldie is, I believe, 5-1. and one. Both are coming off of their UFC debuts. Should be a good fight. Uh, definitely a another test for, uh, you know, the undersized Look, Boomi, who used to fight in Invicta at Adam Weight. All right, so that was the news for the past, uh, really, several weeks. I thought there'd... There wasn't a lot of news, you know, for a good while. And then in the last week, week and a half, you know, fight announcements really started coming out. So normally this is where we move on to the rankings update portions. But there hasn't been a UFC event for a couple weeks. And there isn't one this coming weekend. Won't be one till UFC, was it, 246 next weekend. So no real updates to make to the rankings. So we'll move along to a little section I like to call Welcome to the Scene, where I rattle off the names of some of the newest uh, named subscribers. So if you go into your settings under YouTube and make your subscriptions public, it'll let me know who you are when you subscribe. So welcome to Wayne Mack, Jay Wilson, uh, Renal Vital, Illegal Online, Esportes Paratodos, 
Alex Martins, Sonia Perez, uh, John Thrill, El Gordo, Frank the is it Frank the Dupa, Frank the Dupa, uh, Wind Gorilla, and Presena Twenty Six. So welcome to the scene, all of you. Um, want to give a special thank you to really to all of my subscribers. I had set a back at, at the end of September. I had set a year end goal of reaching 500 subscribers before the year end and we actually exceeded that right now we're sitting at as recording this uh, about 515 subscribers so we're on set to make the monthly goal of adding another 50 subscribers before the end of the month because it's only the ninth already as I'm recording this so almost halfway there already so thank you to all the subscribers and special thank you to all these newest subscribers that helped me reach that year-end subscriber goal. And which brings us to what's going to be the final segment of the night, a little bit of a weekend preview here. Only one event this weekend. It's going to be one championship, a new tomorrow. And there's two ladies' fights. First up, at flyweight, Ayaka Miura, 9-2, and two, is going to be taking on Mera Mazar, 6 and 2. Miura from J Japan. Mazar from Brazil. Now, Mazar has not fought in over, in almost two years. It'll be a month and 10 days since her last fight when she fights in. Uh, she's currently on a two fight win streak. Miura, um, at least a five fight win streak. Let me see. Yep, exactly a five-fight win streak for Miura. Looking at the stats, uh, oh, I don't have any stats for Mayor of Mazar. And I, honestly, I haven't seen any fights of hers either. What makes this fight interesting is that Miura is pretty much a one-trick pony in that she always goes for tosses, for trips, or throws into uh, scarf hold position and then gets a lot of submissions from there uh, an arm triangle choke she has a scarf hold arm lock another scarf hold arm arm lock well, that says no contest i'm not sure what that was about uh let's see another scarf hold arm lock an americana and then another americana so two americanas just since coming to one championship so she like I said she's kind of a one trick pony but what makes her interesting is that basically almost nobody has been able to stop that one trick I mean she has a loss to Amy Fujino who was way more experienced I mean that was only her second fight as a pro and then she had a loss to Viviani Araujo they were both 4-1 and one at the time that's nothing to be ashamed of there I mean Araujo like two fights later, was in the UFC. So. so it should be an interesting fight there just to see can Mazar stop Miura from doing what she does best. Personally, I don't think so. I'm going with Miura in this one. That's the pick. And then in the co-main event at Strawweight, Nong Stamp Fairtex, uh, 3 and 0 taking on Puja the Cyclone Tomar 4 and 3. Stamp of course is undefeated in MMA and then has a lifelong career of uh, Muay Thai behind her. Tomar's coming in off a win, a split decision win over Priscilla Hertati Lumbangal almost a year ago. Uh, her most recent fight was a Muay Thai fight against being a win that she lost. Uh, before that, she was coming off of two straight losses. First to Tiffany Teo via armbar, and then to Gian Radzwan via triangle choke. Looking at the stats, Stamp is only 22. I'm not sure what Tomar's age is. Uh, Stamp is going to be the taller fighter, 5'2", 157 centimeters. To Tomar, who is five foot even, 152 centimeters. Listen, this, the pick is easy to make in this one. It's Stamp Fairtex. 
this is honestly, this is probably a step back for her after defeating B. Nguyen because Tomar is coming off a loss in a Muay Thai bout early, like last year to B. Nguyen. They fought in Vietnam where it was all stand-up fights at an event, one event there. You know, Tomar lost to, to B in the stand-up. She's definitely going to lose to to stamp in the stand-up. And doesn't seem like her ground game is going to be any of a threat either because all three of her losses are by submission. And she doesn't have any wins by submission, so... Yeah, definitely not going to be a threat on the ground to stamp either. So, th- yeah. I mean, you'd have to be insane to pick Tomar in this. I mean, going on topology, out of 258 predictions, 97% <laughs> are for stamp Fairtex. So, definitely go with Fairtex to win this one. All right, so that's it for this week. Uh, no discussion topic. I had one in mind because, like I said, this was the episode number 50. But I just couldn't bring myself to sit down and really like write it out, what I wanted to talk about. Uh, so we'll try to work it out for next week. But, uh, hey, thanks for helping me make it to number 50. Uh, you know, we started doing these live and then doing them recorded for now until... Uh, We'll get back to live eventually. Um, anyway, let me know your thoughts on everything and anything in the comments down below. Of course, likes are always appreciated. And, you know, what are you waiting for? Subscribe to WMMAC Now, the best, fastest growing women's mixed martial arts dedicated platform on YouTube. Don't forget to hit that bell for notifications. And we'll see you next time.